I thought about making this episode all about the foods that inadvertently hurt you while you're eating them, but it doesn't matter because they're so delicious. I'm talking about magma hot cheese pizza that burns the roof of your mouth, powdered salt covered sunflower seeds that leave your lips all shriveled and raw, caramels that pull out dental work, and light bulbs that Please, please, please don't eat light bulbs. But then I remembered there are way more interesting painful foods out there that use a host of clever chemistry to make us feel. So today, let's catch some feels. We've all been there. You go in for that first sip of tea or coffee and you forget that it's freshly brewed and hovering just below the boiling point. It burns, it hurts, it ruins your tongue for a day or two. When you feel that pain on your tongue, it's all thanks to a special receptor called TRPV1, which is an acronym for the receptor for painful vibrations number one. One of the wildest things about the plant kingdom, in my humble opinion, is that a bunch of different plants have figured out how to trigger TRPV1 in the same way as that hot cup of coffee. This magic show is called chemesthesis, the chemical stimulation of tactile nerves. As you know from watching every minute of this program over the years, we've talked about some of these special edible plants. When most of us think of spicy foods, we think about chilies. No, not that chilies. Is that what most of you think about? The pain that we feel from chilies comes primarily from the chemical substance capsaicin, which is one of the hottest members of the capsaicinoid family. Capsaicin fits snugly into TRPV1 and provides lots of pain. The two keys to working with chilies in the kitchen is to understand where in the fruit the capsaicin lives and how much capsaicin is in that particular type of chili. So where does it live? Do you remember this little experiment? We separated the flesh, ribs, and seeds from 40 jalapenos and sent them to an independent lab for capsaicin analysis. On average, there were five milligrams of capsaicin per kilo of flesh, 73 milligrams per kilo in the seeds, and 512 milligrams per kilo in the ribs. That's right, the heat in chilies is found primarily in the ribs. Now it's true that the seeds are spicy, but that's entirely by association. They sit on the white ribs and they pick up capsaicin. If you want, say, big jalapeno flavor, but with very little heat, be sure to remove both the ribs and the seeds. Alternatively, you could just eat the ribs and feel the burn. And if you wanna know how spicy a particular chili is, you wanna know where it ranks on the Scoville scale. Here's a quick rundown on some common chilies. That would be bell peppers, cubanelles, poblanos, anaheims, cherries, jalapenos, Fresnos, Serranos, Bird Chilies, Habaneros, and Scotch Bonnets. Those numbers that were popping up on the screen are Scoville heat units, the reflection of the spiciness of the chili. Now the bigger the number, the bigger the burn. And if you wanna start on a batch of Fresno chili carrot hot sauce, which trust me you do, check out the link below this video. And hey, while you're there, hit the like button, hit subscribe, get wild. Ginger is also a proud member of the Chemesthetics Club, offering up a wonderful array of painful experiences, depending on whether the ginger is raw, cooked, or dried. So let's check them out. The compound in fresh ginger that triggers the TRPV1 receptor is called gingerol. It fits into the receptor, but not nearly as well as capsaicin. And for that reason, we experience it as much less spicy. But that's not the whole story. When we dry ginger to make the dry spice we use in spice cake and cookies, Gingerol loses a molecule of water and turns into another compound called shogaol. Shogaol is a closer match to capsaicin than gingerol. It fits into the receptor better, and so we experience it as spicier. We can also go in the other direction. If we cook ginger, like we do in a stir fry, we break down some of the gingerol into another compound called zingerone. You gotta love these names. It fits poorly into the receptor, and so we experience it as less spicy than either fresh or dried ginger. Okay, so let's put all of these in order, from spiciest to least spicy, along with their chemical structure. That would be capsaicin, found in chilies, shogaol, found in dry ginger, gingerol, found in fresh ginger, and finally, zingerone, found in cooked ginger. Here's the really cool bit. The closer the chemical structure is to capsaicin, that strong fit, the spicier the ginger experience. You know what, watching that reminds me that ginger is such a show off. Three different kinds of pain, seriously? <coughs> Overachiever. But Ginger better watch its back because there's competition coming from all over the place and some pretty unlikely foods. Take extra virgin olive oil, for example. Yes, it's obviously rich because it's a pure fat. And yes, it can display an incredible range of flavor and aroma from nutty and buttery to grassy and artichokey. But at the end of the day, extra virgin olive oil is also spicy. Interestingly, for olive oil, the burn is localized completely in the back of the throat, throat because that's where the oleocanthal receptors are located. And it turns out, in the olive oil biz, folks talk about a one-cough, two-cough, or even a three-cough olive oil. <coughs> 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 Sorry, um, it looks cool and I wanted to try it again. If you don't regularly drink olive oil, weirdo, it's highly likely that you're still drinking the burn. And I'm not talking about a spicy Bloody Mary, so stay tuned because I might be talking about a spicy Bloody Mary. I'm talking about bubbles, carbonation, 
Spicy water. Carbonated beverages like beer, soda water, and champagne are packed with dissolved CO2. They contain way more CO2 than water can comfortably hold. When that CO2 comes out of solution in your mouth, something very special happens. Take a sip of soda water, and the carbon dioxide dissolved in the water seeps into the cells on our tongues, triggering another nerve receptor called TRPA1. You feel the sharp bite of carbonation. It is both a feeling and a taste. How cool is that? Now, we all know that soda water is a perfect beverage and needs no further adornment. But if you were to enjoy, say, a whiskey soda, you wouldn't just be getting tipsy. You'd actually be doubling down on the pain. That's right, that ethyl alcohol triggers our good old friend TRPV1! So at this point, you're probably thinking, is there anything that doesn't cause pain? And the answer is no, it's lightning round. Black pepper has a compound called piperine. It's related to gingerol and capsaicin. That's pain. Raw garlic has allicin. You remember it from that episode, right? That's pain. Mustard seed and wasabi, owl isothiocyanate does the job. Cinnamon, cinnamaldehyde makes your fireball spicy. Light bulbs, seriously. Do not eat light bulbs. The fascinating bit about all of this, of course, is that this is pain that we enjoy. These foods trigger our adrenaline response, often make us sweat, and when paired with really pleasurable ingredients like sugars and fats, add loads of complexity. One of the most delicious and ingenious examples of counterbalancing chili's fiery heat can be found in Sichuan's mala, or numbing hot flavor, which uses Sichuan peppercorns. They too trigger TRPV1 thanks to a compound called hydroxy alpha sensual, which offers a tingling numbing sensation as well as being spicy. One of my favorite spicy ingredients that we haven't even talked about yet is horseradish. 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 Which is a word I sometimes have a hard time saying. And that is what I want to cook with today. So let's go to the kitchen. I'm going to make prepared horseradish that beats the pants off of anything that you can buy at the store and it keeps in the fridge for weeks. We process peeled chopped horseradish with warm water and a little bit of distilled vinegar in a blender until it's as fine as we can get it, which will take about a minute. Then we let the mixture sit in the blender for 10 minutes. Finally, we add some salt and an additional four teaspoons of vinegar and blend until combined. What? Why this crazy process? Science, baby. When you break the cell walls of horseradish, they release an enzyme called myrosinase. Now that reacts with another compound to create the pungent chemical owl isothiocyanate. More isothiocyanate will form if the mixture is slightly acidic, hence the small addition of vinegar at the beginning of the process. Like most chemical reactions, this process is hastened by heat, hence the warm water. The 10 minute rest, that allows the pungency to build. And the final addition of vinegar stabilizes the punch so it is retained over time. Yes. Once you've made the prepared horsey, you are moments away from a gorgeous Bloody Mary. It's wonderful stirred into mashed potatoes and it really shines in deviled eggs. Please do all of those things. But also, please combine it with three other painful ingredients for this incredible cream sauce. We've got minced raw garlic, Dijon mustard, heavy cream, sour cream, our prepared horseradish, a little bit of sugar, and salt and pepper. This sauce is roast beef's best friend, but you know what? Salmon has a pretty big crush on it too. We'll take a slice of German rye, a big old schmear of our sauce, a few slices of smoked salmon, and maybe we'll go a little wild with some chives. Oh yeah. This is definitely, without a doubt, one of one million delicious ways to eat painful foods. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? I wanna make a huge shout out to Cook's Illustrated Senior Science Research Editor, Paul Adams, for his help on this one. There's a link to his story about all things chemesthetic below. You have to check it out. If you wanna learn more about Mala and the gorgeous food of Sichuan, I highly recommend Fuchsia Dunlop's update to her book, Land of Plenty. It is called The Food of Sichuan, and it is an indispensable book. It's really beautiful. You're gonna learn so much. Check this out. Of course, I have links to all of the recipes from the show below, so you can click, 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 and cook, cook, cook. Thank you all for hanging out and catching some feels with me today. I will see you next time.